So good afternoon, uh, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our third session in our PwC Private and Family Business Lunch Hour Series. Today's session, we will focus on workforce and specifically upskilling and reskilling. Please note our remaining sessions scheduled for the 9th and 23rd of July and also the 6th of August. You would have seen some of those sessions on the on the slides that have been rolling as as you've been waiting and we look forward to to have you at those sessions um, as well just a few housekeeping matters there are a couple of polling questions that we would like participants to answer you'll see that there's a polling drop down boss box on the top right hand side of your screen so if you can just click on that i think there's only two questions in there and then as we go throughout the interview and the session today we would encourage you to ask questions and you'll see at the bottom right hand corner of your screen there's a Q&A drop down box if you click on that and just select all panelists then your question uh, will be channeled through to the panelists and either myself or Andrea will pick it up so my name is Skalk Barnard I'm the PwC Africa family business leader and I'm joined today by Andrea Benkenstein, who's from our Family Business Center of Excellence. We also have the pleasure of having Kathy Albertain, who's the Chief People and Culture Officer of Coca-Cola Beverages Africa, as our guest. Welcome, Kathy, and thank you very much for, for your time today. Thank you. I think it goes without saying that all businesses are going through a challenging time at the moment. And based on the supplementary budget speech yesterday, things aren't going to get any better soon. So as businesses are navigating these unprecedented times by reconfiguring their business models, their operating models, revisiting their supply chain, looking at their technology, and also their physical footprint, the question is, what are they doing about their workforce? You know, for a number of years, we've been talking about the impact of the fourth industrial revolution on our workforce. workforce. You know, how jobs will change, how skills will change, and essentially the characteristics of our work, workforce. You know, never did we anticipate that a global pandemic will be a catalyst for change and force businesses to embrace technology and to change the way that we operate. Clearly, we won't do business like we did six months ago. You know, our workforces do require new skills. And maybe this is a positive that we can take from the crisis that we are in at the moment. To discuss this further, I'm going to hand over to Andrea, who will lead our interview with Cathy. Cathy has spent her career at Coca-Cola, where she started as the head office personnel manager way back in 1992. Today, she is the executive director HR for Coca-Cola Beverages Africa, and is also the co-chair for the Coca-Cola Global HR Council. She is married with three kids and she has a keen interest in musical theatre. So welcome again, Cathy, and we're really looking forward to hearing your insights. Thank, Thank you. It's great to be here. Thanks, Kalk. Um, so the COVID-19 lockdown has forced all businesses to reassess almost every aspect of how they work in whatever new normal emerges for our employees whether it includes continuing working from home, interacting digitally or harnessing emerging technologies to innovate, it's important to ensure that your people have the right skills and a willingness to embrace change. The speed of technological advances has already created significant demands for upskilling your workforce and post-crisis demands will heighten that need. Um, but before we dive into the detail, um, let me first check in with Cathy. So I'm sure you've had um, a challenging few months, both from a business and personal perspective, like all of us. Um, and it's great having you today, so thanks again. So tell us a bit more about um, your experience so far. So well, just from a personal level, um, I think that uh, I, I like to encourage everybody to be grateful for this, for certainly for our circumstances. So as, a, as an organization, we're very grateful that we've been allowed to, uh, or we were declared an essential service from, from lockdown level five. Personally, I got to spend three months in Cape Town with my twin boys. Uh, it was their 21st birthday while I was there. So I'm extremely grateful for that time because actually if life had gone on as normal, I, I wouldn't have had um, that opportunity. Um, 
I think um, the experience has been, you know, it's, it, 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 it took us into a place that we've been planning for, but I think that uh, the execution, the sudden execution of those plans has, has created a lot of, um, well, a lot of energy in, in our organization. I think that it's actually been quite exciting um, and, and, but it's actually very difficult to stand up, uh, to get up every morning. And there's part of you that's excited because there's an enormous amount of challenges. And then there's another part of you that is very fearful because it's very difficult to plan. Um, in, and initially when we started, you know, we had a, a V scenario and a, a U scenario, and now we don't know. I mean, this morning I read an article that says that we on the upward trajectory of wave one of what could be four waves and we will be in the situation in 2022. So, so um, I think as, as HR professionals, our, our, you know, our minds need to turn very much more to the future because I think right now, up until now, we've been literally living life day by day. You know, you know how has the regulation changed or which country is which regulation, how we must respond, how are we looking after our people? Um, but I think that the, if it's possible, the dust is settling on an on a very uncertain future, and and so so you know that's where we we need to go. Um, personally, I I actually enjoy challenges. Um, I always say to HR guys, be grateful because um, it's these types of challenges that give us our you know gives us our place at the table in in business, um, and it is very interesting to be. Um, to have the author's pen in our hands around this new way of work, because we've read a lot of stuff about it, we've envisaged it, we've 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 thought about it being something for for younger generations. But suddenly, people like myself, who are still, we, we're a baby boomer, are we having to become very digitally savvy overnight. Um, so, yeah, I think I think there's lots of opportunity. Um, in a, in a very grave time, it's, 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 I mean, it is going to be, uh, for all our economies in Africa, a very, very grave uh, couple of years. But for us as, as, as HR professionals, this is just, a, you know, a, a, something that we need to be grateful for. It will be a great time of our lives, I think. Mm -hmm. No, definitely. And um, what's your, your group's approach been? Like, were you ready to work remotely? So, you know, to be honest with you, we went into this actually, um, I'm going to say like a big bang. I was actually sitting in Addis Ababa. I was organizing the company conference on the 29th of February. It was a Saturday evening. I was around supper table and I got a phone call um, from my boss um, who said um, at this Coke system, they were very worried about this, this uh, you know, at the time it wasn't a pandemic, this disease and around the impact on travel. So literally at that time, we took a call. We were expecting to, we were going to start receiving guests the following day, 250 people flying into Ethiopia. We pulled the plug on that conference on that Saturday night, uh, repurposed it to a local conference. Um, and then at the same time started going, what is an organization do we need to start um, being concerned about? Because a large portion of our um, employees travel. So they either travel regionally through Africa or they travel because they are in the trade. So they in you know they they spend their whole day, eight hours a day, um, in in the trade with customers. So so we started and still to this day meet once a week as an XCOM on, at a special COVID meeting where we meet with we put together a COVID response team, uh, and we've been through varying waves of how to respond, how to preempt, um, how to secure employees, how to build resilience, how to, how should we return to work? Um, and now we're starting to look at how we should plan for the future. So I think, I mean, for some years we've been working on um, leadership behaviors that around accelerating performance, that is really around becoming more agile and being more responsive. Uh, and I think we've had a tremendous time now to put our new skills to Test. We're about to do our annual survey on this, and so I'm very interested to see what feedback we get in terms of have we have we actually delivered as leadership to our employees um, what they would have expected of us uh, in a time like this. So, so I think as a company, um, I mean, I think we we are very grateful that we've been able to continue production in most places. Obviously, the demand is not what it was. Um, 
but but I think that I'm actually quite proud of the employees, the contribution that employees have made without even company initiatives to actually to actually run with this. So I, I think if I had to be step out of my my um, function or my job shoes, I'd look at my organisers and say I'm actually very proud of our people uh, in the way they've responded. I must say it's quite amazing how everybody is just coming together and working together and you know. This, I think, in all, especially in my lifetime, it's the first thing that's been so global that you can mm -hmm. speak to anybody about on any continent because we also have a lot of various calls um, and never have I experienced this coming together and learning from each other and working together. It's really great. Um, so upskilling a workforce is not just a matter of pushing our technical training to employers, but upskilling requires careful assessment of desired skills and competencies to be targeted investment in a learning environment, assessment of the impact of change and a systematic way to measure the return on your upskilling investment. So this initiative also requires significant leadership commitment and drive from the top. So have you adopted any technologies or focus on digitization in different ways during this time? So I think, I mean, we had, I mean, I think as an organization, we, we, we behind others. I mean, our, our industry is probably behind others in terms of digitization. Um, but we have a plan and we're rolling out IT systems. Uh, we've been working on, um, for example, in HR on, on, on uh, learning and development, um, moving it towards self-driven uh, development, et cetera. So we've had plans and, and timelines of implementation of e-learning systems, et cetera. Um, but what has happened is that um, we've actually fast-tracked a lot of that. I mean, so what was an 18-month plan for e-learning is already online. Um, um, the, the, the IT projects that we have to digitize the organization, we've literally just cleared the table of everything else. So we have five big projects in the organization that we are focusing relentlessly on because we believe those are the areas that will get us out of this stronger. And one of them is, is um, the digital uh, transformation. Um, but this situation actually, I mean, we had a change management program for the implementation of our ERP system. But as we go into this, we realize, no, we need a, this is actually a digital transformation and we recalibrated a lot of what our thinking around um, just being a bit more all encompassing and understanding that digitalization is not learning new skills on your computer. It's around all this, you know, around working remotely, working on your own, doing more of an end-to-end -end job, you know, learning how to do the, the sort of um, self-help on getting yourself going on, on your laptop, for example. It's around leading people uh, remotely. Um, it's around your own self-management, work-life balance, because that goes out of the window when you're sitting like we are now. So, I, I mean, on, on all of this, is if we've actually become um, you know, microscopically focused on this, and we've been absolutely ruthless about actually, we're not going to do that. We're not going to do that. We're not going to do that. So we've been very clear about what needs to be fast tracked and what needs to get off the table. Um, and that does take it, it, it creates a lot of fear in some people because their jobs get impacted. So we also having to do a lot of work on um, on identifying people whose jobs um, will become less impactful and how do we reskill them or what skills can do they have that we can repurpose um, in other, completely other areas. Um, so we're busy with it with work now where we because of the focus on IT is we're looking at all of the administration capabilities and how can we dovetail those to project management capabilities, for example. Um, so yeah, so there's, so there's a huge amount of work. I mean we we have um, teams of people that visit the countries to implement like the ERP system because they can't travel. So we are currently, we've had to, and they, these guys are normally technical people. So it will be somebody that has actually physically worked in manufacturing, that has actually worked on the manufacturing module, and then they will do the training. So we've had to, I mean, we constantly, we, I wouldn't say we've reskilled them, we're working with them all the time, is that you've had to take a guy that would normally go and work on the line and train somebody on the line. They actually have to train via video conference as we're talking now. 
Mm. So we've had to to help those guys, first of all, to become trainers and then to do it through e-learning, to change the nature of the content, because the content format needs to change. Uh, we're deploying the ERP system in Botswana and Zambia as we speak virtually. So there are no IT teams or, you know, you know the, the, the vendor teams on the ground in the countries. We're having to do it um, through, through video conferencing. So there's a lot of work there. But, I mean, while I think that our, the guys are doing a great job, I, I, this is not done. Because every single day you realize that this thing is going to be longer and longer. It means that we need to get more and more intense. We can't use band-aids to to get through a, a, a section of the project we this is really a new way of working i mean for real and we also have to ch to change people's minds to say you know what in the future you're not going to spend your life flying around because there are people that love that but yeah. actually we're not going to let them do that anymore um because we've realized that that we we're actually being very successful in what we're doing now so, so that's yeah lots of lots of lots of work i'm sure there are lots of other examples i've forgotten about but uh, as we speak but uh, those are those are big ones for us kathy but, if i andrea if i may kathy so yeah. um you, you said that you had to fast track a lot of the um, plans that you had in terms of implementing you know some of the it solutions mm -hmm. but upskilling or training your people it's not something that you can just fast track, you know, immediately. So how did you manage that? Because I would imagine that, you know, people get left behind, you know, in terms of their skills as you start to implement IT. Did you put in additional plans for that or how did you deal with that? So I think one of the things, I mean, part of, one of the things that we are battling with at the moment is that, you know, because, you know, quite often if you read things like on Facebook and social media to talk about what you could do with yourself while you're sitting at home. It's like we're all bored. And what we actually discovered, at, especially in our center office teams, um, people are really starting to work long hours. It's, and, they are, and now they are very, very tired. And that is because, mm -hmm. so to your point, what we would have point, uh, organized as a, a week's training course becomes a series of um, more orientation, change management, as opposed to just imparting the skills. So you've got to teach them how to use the computer first. You've got to go back, you've got to, um, so, so you find that people have been redeployed. So instead of the sales training person being in the country's training sales, that person's actually helping us with a training online training skills. So we've had to re refocus, um, refocus people and redeploy them elsewhere and also you need to understand that this is a, is a journey that you all need to do together for a long time as opposed to you just bring them into a train into a classroom boom bam you know they get trained and then you they write the post course and off we go it, it's, it doesn't work like that because they they there's a whole lot of other stuff which um we learned actually from our Coca-Cola colleagues, uh, the guys in China said it only struck them afterwards that people's mental health uh, need support. And so for a lot of times, it's, it, it's, it's, you need to support people personally, because I think everybody gets it that they need to learn a new skill, but the, the fear of that new skill, particularly where, you know, if you're a technical person, it's not a new kind of production line, because those things, that's what they love. It's now it's a computer. This is something that the IT guys used to do before. So it's, I mean, I don't know that we've got this thing 100% right. And I am very worried that as we, as this, you know, three weeks, three months, hopefully not three year period, because we, we're going to have to um, really start focusing on resilience um, and on getting people to believe in themselves and that they almost drive their own. Um, yeah, to drive their own development, um, um, uh, yeah, but to keep going, you know, it's, it's so I, I, you know, when I say, I think we've done a lot of good things, but I don't know that we can, we can mark the homework to say it's been successful at all yet. <laughs> this is, this is, we're learning as we do it. Um, so, Kathy, we have a question from, from the audience. Uh, so, can you please share with us some of the techniques or tools um, you used to manage your people remotely. Okay, yeah. So, so um, we um, quite quickly. So, so a lot of us have been working remotely for for some time. Okay. So, from an equipment point of view, 
we work in spaces in our office, so we we work um, wirelessly. We, we, so we, as I work in the office, I can work at home. So that that or I can work in Uganda, etc. We have a lot of people that travel uh, a lot. So there's some part of that that we were actually quite used to. We've got our group office, for example, is. Uh, in we've got two major group offices, one in Joburg and one in Port Elizabeth, and then we have people scattered around, like in Dubai, Nairobi, Cape Town, etc. Um, and so we and we do like the XCOM. We've got XCOM people, one person sitting in every single country. So we're used to doing these type of online meetings. Um, but then you know you'd be in the office on Friday or next week or something like that. So 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 we did a lot of we. We've got a portal that we we upload. Um, we're starting to now push out um, e-learning material to people, just little bite-sized chunks on how to manage your team, how to keep yourself motivated. We upped our employee assistance program uh, and we flash it out a couple of times a week um, so that people have got somewhere to you know put up their hand and say, I need help. Um, but I think the, as I said, as as, I, as we look at this this going on for much longer, we need to up our game still on this. So I've actually just I'm just working with the internal comms people and the CEO around um, uh, changing the way he, he's communicating to the organisation. So so I think part of what is important now is that we stop pushing information out and we start listening. So we're going to put an Ask Shark line in. Uh, we're going to run a couple of surveys. We've already run some surveys, but we're going to run a couple of surveys now. So, for example, the engagement survey, we're still running it this year. Uh, we're going to add a section on COVID um, so that we can get some feedback. Very important that we listen. But um, there's, um, I, I, I constantly are talking to my colleagues around um, how they should be um, running their meetings. So even the CEO, I sit with him once a month after the expo meeting and I go through what worked in the meeting, what didn't. I try to put guidelines on this thing about whether the video should be on or whether the video should be off. Um, um, the butting in, because that's also quite difficult. You, you can't read body language. So we're doing lots and lots of work around that um, and, and, and learning as we go. And I think I, I mentioned to you, Andrew and Skalk, earlier, the, the interesting thing for me is the introverts are battling with this. Extroverts have found a way to connect. Um, they much easier use the WhatsApp group, et cetera. Um, so we really need to go find those people and pull them in as opposed to just let everybody run on their own. Um, so it's, it takes a lot of extra effort. And I think leaders' jobs are really now becoming leaders. Um, mm. And they need to do only the work that they should be doing, and that is the leadership stuff, and 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 get themselves out of the spreadsheets, etc. Because it it's it has never been more important to be a people leader. Yes, definitely. Have agree. Um, have you seen? Has these surveys been effective? Have you used them? Yes. Yeah, so, so the. the so we look. We obviously have the benefit of being in this in this Coke Council, this global thing. So, so we've used surveys that other bottlers have used, um, and the feedback has been um, really good. I mean, the feedback actually, if you just took the scoring, was very positive. Um, I think our people, we we've we've done a lot of work to try not impact people. So, so uh, you know, as we stand now, um, we haven't had to. Um, clear any sort of short time cut pay, retrench people, et cetera. And I think our people are quite um, appreciative of that because so many of them have husbands that have a business at home that hasn't been able to function. Um, um, but but, but the, in those surveys, it's the comments. So lots of those comments, we've actually acted on them. We've started WhatsApp groups um, for, for people, we, we're about to implement Yammer so that we can have an online uh, social media platform, um, which that's another thing that was brought forward now. Um, so we can have an a, a internal um, platform for communication. Um, just suggestions because the things that, um, you know, we as an organization, we're focusing on our people, but there's so many people that are worrying about the schooling of their children and the fact that they actually are having to homeschool their kids. So to give people permission is also been, it's been, and that took some, you know, hammering into some of the, the, the leadership. 
is that you have to trust people, first of all, that they were working um, because they, you can't have a camera on them watching what they do. Um, and, and you actually have to, we allowed, we had a rule, no meetings before nine when we could only uh, uh, exercise in that window before. Um, we allow people, so give, if they need to do two hours of sc homeschooling in the day for their kids, you need, we, you've got to allow people to do that. Um, we've given people uh, undertakings that, you know, when they come back to work, it will probably initially be on a volunteer basis because we don't want people um, fearing for their health or the health maybe of a, of a parent at home that they're looking after that type of thing. So, so I, I think the, and that's where the listening comes in. The surveys have actually been very, very useful to us um, to get feedback and, and act on it. And Kathy, with these, with the surveys, when you operate across Africa, have you had any, maybe I'll, let me rephrase the question. So from a cultural perspective, has there been any differences in how your teams across Africa um, have reacted to the way um, that you're operating now, specifically when it comes to, you know, trusting your employees you know, to do things um, mm -hmm. or the leadership skills that you just referred to, which, you know, is, is completely different you know, in, in, in a situation like this where you have to employ more of your softer skills to lead people as opposed to, you know, driving the business. You know, how have you sort of navigated through, through you know, any of those potential cultural differences? So I think, um, you know, I think one of the things that I've seen, because obviously we work towards what we refer to as one CCBA. So we try and work towards a singular culture for CCBA across all the countries, understanding there will be cultural nuances. I think what this has highlighted is actually how one CCBA we are, because I think without exception, there's been a country that has, uh, every country has responded in what we would refer to as meet or exceed the local regulations. So, so the idea is not to comply with local le uh, legislation. It's what is the local legislation, and then it, what is the way CCBA would like to uh, to treat their employees. So, the countries that have no lockdown and minimal uh, concern coming out of government that there is a pandemic, we've still implemented all the the health and safety programs, the leadership programs, the remote working as far as possible, all of those things, we've still implemented those. Um, in some of our countries, in mean, some of our countries, we've, we've actually, in, within a week, we were manufacturing sanitizer because they were countries that did not have, uh, the government couldn't get supplies of sanitizer. It's not the kind of thing they were used to having. Um, I mean, the enthusiasm and the pride with which employees you know, put that hand sanitizer because we we give it to employees, we give it to customers, and then we donate it to the community. So then the the pride with which they do that. I mean, we've had employees come to us with uh, designs of a hand sanitizer that you you know with a foot pump or an elbow pump or something like that that you don't need to touch. Um, so they've designed it at home and brought it to us to, uh, to use. We, and in Uganda, if you're aware of this, the, the government said that we could carry on, any industry could carry on, but, but they're closing down the transport system. So you have to house your workers on site. Within 48 hours, we had a hostel on site, because that's not something that we have there. Um, employees were volunteered to participate. In fact, we've, we had probably three times as many employees volunteered as what we needed. So we've, uh, and we have to, you know, rotate them very carefully because there are rules about the, the, the transport. Um, I think that the, I think our guys, are, I think the FMCG industry is about thinking on your feet and this has been about thinking on your feet. I think where the difficulty is going to come is that, you know, the ongoing remote meeting, you know, the guys want to sit, you know, together over a drink and have a chat about work issues and now they're having to communicate they're battling you know i don't think any of them understood that they needed to read body language as much as they all understand now i mean i think it's heightened the awareness that how important soft skills are um, but but i think i think that the I think as CCBA, we've responded in the CCBA way. I think the differences and the nuances would actually be coming from it's actually regulatory issues as opposed to local cultural issues. I'm just going to open a, a poll again. So 
feel free to compete it. Um, Kathy, last time we spoke, you actually alluded to an app as well where people application where they can um, apply for jobs or where there's yeah. different skills uploaded. You can just tell us a bit more about that. Yeah, so this uh, we cannot take um, the 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 accolades for this. This comes from the Coca Cola company. But what we're looking at is is an app that I think they refer to as um, Opportunity Marketplace, and this would be fast tracked to be implemented. But it would be something that will be part of the new way of working. So what it is is that if you are um, wanting an area of development, you're feeling like you're not stretched in your current job, et cetera, you, put, you develop a little profile, you load it on and, and you say what opportunities you're looking for. And, you know, maybe you have five hours a week to, to donate to this. Um, from a business side, a manager is going to be, they've got to work on certain project. Um, for example, we need to translate a whole lot of our training material into e-material. Um, we probably need you know, five people with technical skills to help us with that and they can if they could donate every friday afternoon and then people will go and find or managers will go and find people um, the cultural issue is that the the bosses so the managers of the people uh, have to let go so they they will have a place in the process where they release the person for that time so that they agree to it but they then they this is going to be people looking for opportunities across the organization and it could be from two hours to two days to you know one day a month for the rest of the year um so it'll be about almost like job sharing it'll be it'll be an opportunity to learn new skills it'll be an opportunity to get exposure into in different countries or into different functions um it'll be an opportunity for us as management instead of because obviously every employer right now is worried about fixed costs in their business. Um, so the traditional way would be to go and find uh, or get a new job and then go find an additional person. Meantime, you actually have the skill in the organization um, that could be redeployed. So we're quite excited about that. It's obviously for us a huge opportunity as we sit in this COVID era, but we believe it will be a way of work. And in fact, it will probably be used across the code system as well at, at some stage. So, so that is definitely something about the new way of working. But the old way of managing is going to have to uh, let go. Um, so that will be our, our challenge. Yeah, and I think so not everyone has to learn to code, but many people need to understand like something like managing artificial intelligence or data analytics, autonomous vehicles, and other technologies that we can't get predict or those emerging now will be created in the future. And um, people in every enterprise will require strong leadership skills like you alluded to, like the ability to inspire and empower others to take on the challenge of continuous learning and to make good decisions about the use and um, implementation of technology. But to get back to your managers during this time, um, how did you assist them or are you training them with regards to soft skills for including employee resilience and agility, communication and instance performance management so we have for for probably near the inception of ccba which is 2016 we've been embarked on a program where we have been uh, um, training um basically what we did is we built a, a leadership framework around behaviors that drive uh, the mobilizing executing transforming the organization through agility. So we've been working on this and, and every team in every country is measured on it every year. Um, so I think this is, um, that is also in some areas, particularly where it, they didn't respond as easily. It's been double clicked into uh, bespoke team coaching, the senior team in each country on, on how to drive that resilience. So, so I think we've been building something for some time. Um, We've now had to actually translate that into a little bit of pragmatism. So it's you know it's it's fun to talk about you know you know you know clarity and uh, simplifying things etc. But now we have actually had to say literally when you sit on a team call like this, don't say are there any questions next item on the agenda because that's what the guys do. I've, I've, I've got them all go. They have to count to ten. <laughs> Deathly silence for 10, min 10 seconds before they can go, okay, next item on the agenda. So we've really had to actually become quite, quite tactical, pragmatic in the training now in, in executing how to manage this thing virtually, how to learn to listen, uh, to stop focusing so much on the tasks that need to get done, 
uh, and more on, on how they get done. So, I mean, I've, I've upped my one on one meetings with my XCOM colleagues. Um, I join other team meetings um, so that I can give them all feedback. I've actually, we've actually implemented a more of a functional business partnering model from HR. So, I have some of my HR team sitting in all the meetings uh, to, to help give the feedback because I think the sort of the classroom textbook training is there they can go on to linkedin learning and all the things that you know are available seminars like this but i think that they need actually in the moment coaching so that's also something that we're looking at what actually we got exposed to yesterday was an was a an, a coaching app um that will also help this virtual type of coaching um so that i think is going to be something i think that if we put together our plans for next year um coach and it's each other you know what you don't need to phone a coach you know what i mean it's it's actually be accepting the feedback in the moment um, mm -hmm. um and not being so task focused kathy um andrea mentioned uh, performance management um yeah, earlier on and you know i just look at how i manage my staff and you know how the absence absence of actually seeing them you know in action and interacting with them yeah, is impacting the way that I, you know, that I look at their performance, you know, and, and maybe that shouldn't be the case. But um, yeah, in, in your organization, have you had any thoughts around changing performance management or do you have a system in place that already you know, caters for um, you know, your mobile workforce? Uh, this is something that we're grappling with. I mean, right on, I mean, I think we have quite a traditional um, approach to performance management. So there's very clear targets. And of course, those targets are all out the window and we, we're about to go into mid-year review. So everybody's in a bit of a panic. Um, and I, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm talking to the CEO about moving to away from such a rigid number, number re review as opposed to a how 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 are you how are you coping um and, and there are some companies that that do it particularly in, you know the ones i deal with in the bottling world they're already at a point where they where they have more of a how discussion and they build up a, a sort of a journal of of discussions and then that actually transform translates into an end of year view of you um so i think this is probably one of our our, our biggest cha challenges um, and it is difficult. So, so you know, the some people are just absolutely not. They're not comfortable having these conversations anyway. So, to to have them via video conference is going to be very difficult. So, I can honestly say I don't have the solution to this. Um, it's going to be a difficult ride as we go into our performance review season. Um, and you know, things that I'm thinking about in my head. And I remember years and years ago, a line manager asked me if I thought an HR manager or HR person should sit in every review. And I said, absolutely not, because the behavior must be role modeled by the manager. But you know what? <laughs> I might have to go back on that because maybe it will be better. You know, who cares if you get a score of two or three or four? Um, actually, all employees, no matter how senior they are, they need to know how much the organization loves them at the moment and how much they understand these, these circumstances. And they need to mm -hmm. say, you know what, I have no clue how to do this video conference meeting and how can you help me? So somehow we need to move to that, the, the, the softer performance management process. But I do think it's a, it's a big challenge. And, you know, maybe, maybe it's also the opportunity because I think in HR, we've been reading about this this way of doing performance management for a number of years. And I mean, with all due respect, even I have in Africa, I've said this is, you know, we're not ready for it yet, but maybe we have to be ready now. Sure. Have you um, seen a, or noticed a change in the business culture during this time? I think lots of changes. I mean, um, I, look, I think that it, it's pulled us together and it's, and there's been um, hope and um, I mean, I think we've lived through up our values because we've really focused on looking after our employees, looking after our customers, looking after our communities. And I think we've, we've heightened that, um, you know, we've redirected lots of our spend to, to, to donations to community to, on you know, personal protective equipment, uh, that, those kind of things. Um, um, but I, I have picked up in literally in the last couple of weeks, two weeks, I think 
people have gotten to a point enough is enough. And I think if, uh, if we don't respond urgently to that smell that, that a couple of us have already, um, then there will be a change of culture and people will start getting, but they will start withdrawing. Um, I mean, I've had in the, in the last 24 hours, we run a one, you know, one of the teams, a group office team of a WhatsApp group, and somebody said something on that and, and the whole lot of people left the group. Um, a lot of people said, you know, you the HR director, you, you know, why are you busy with this? But actually I contacted each person that left and said, I don't, I, we really care about the fact that you've left this group because we would like, because it's a fun, it's what I've said is it's the banter that goes on around the coffee machine. So that's what this group is about. But as soon as, I mean, if you were in the office and you avoided the coffee machine because you didn't want to talk to the people there, that's not good. So it's as not good on a, on a, on a WhatsApp group. <laughs> so, so, I mean, I think it's very important that right now we take care of these little things because they will become big things at the blink of an eye. So, so I, I think that we are going into a new era of how people are going to are feeling. And, um, you know, I worry about the fact sort of in South Africa where everything's opened up and everybody's supposedly going back. I, I'm sure if you walk into in the shops, nobody's gone back to the shops. I mean, the mm -hmm. shops are empty. So, so life is going to be actually probably disappointing to people and and this economy is going to be a huge challenge and it's going to be a personal challenge and it's a challenge on the family and the schooling is going to be put a lot of pressure on families i think so we've got to dial up very quickly on on how we keep people engaged now right now i think we're at a precipice at the moment Sure, yeah. And um, so PwC's research shows that one in three jobs is likely to be severely disrupted or to disappear mm -hmm. in the next decade because of the technologic yeah. and technological challenge. Um, and this could affect almost half of all low skilled jobs and a third of semi skilled jobs. And there's a skills mismatch around the world and millions mm -hmm. of jobs are going unfilled. And it's not possible to recruit enough already skilled people to do these jobs. So the only option is to help members of the existing workforce, those currently excluded and those starting their working lives, also those in the next generation to gain these knowledge and skills they need and this, um, that society needs um, them to have in this age. So going forward, companies will need to rethink the talent pipeline. So have you compared your current skills and your capabilities, um, your business with the skills you might need in the future? No, we we actually busy with our. We, 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 we've started a process last year called Mission Critical Roles, and and so that essentially um, is 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 looking about the you know the future skills that we need and what we have and don't have. Um, but you know, it's like it like everything we did last year. It's a plan that was going to go over a lot in, in the next couple of years. Um, so I think you know. So we're starting to relook our annual sort of succession planning process around you know you know what is and as I was saying earlier, you know. Uh, do that do people have digital skills digital future skills but I, and that i'm not saying is can they work their laptop that's the all this thing about how you lead in that environment all of those kinds of things so we're starting to look at things like that and and source um development for for people um the other thing that we're busy doing and this is a bit it's quite it takes a lot of time but we're having to speak we're, we're having a lot of one-on-ones with people around because i mean there are lots of people in this situation that know that they are not busy and they are very scared and they're not going to put their hand up and say, oh, you know, I've not done any work today because I haven't had anything to do. Um, so it's to actually to talk to those people, to give them um, a secure environment in which they can admit that they, they're underutilized, uh, to help them um, find their interests and skills or something that we can link into and then to give them the courage and the confidence to, to develop some new skill. Um, but when early discussions, this is not going to be easy because the, the 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 part where we get to them admitting that they're actually not busy and being open to being reskilled, um, is those conversations are still are very difficult. But that's uh, you know that's the kind of thing that we're looking at. Um, we we hope that that app that we put out the, the younger generation who have a you know more inquiring mind will go and learn things. I mean, we there are probably people in our business that have skills that we have no idea that. They have. I mean, mm -hmm. there are people that design apps that are not anywhere in here, any function that does that. So where are those people and can't we go and move them somewhere else? Um, so we need to find them. But I think the, the confidence 
for people to be uh, on the safe place for people to say i need to be reskilled is is a, is the biggest challenge and it's come so, so 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 quickly i mean people could hide in places then you can't now it's very exposed um so so i mean a lot of all of this the hard digital stuff is the obvious stuff that you need uh, you know we're going to have to learn about ai and we're going to have to learn about you know new systems and you know uh, what devices are going to look different etc those are not the biggest issues. The biggest issue is, is the, the soft side of working and communicating and interfacing and how do you look somebody in the eye like this, you know, those kinds of things. Um, and that's what we need to develop. But that takes uh, courage, actually, because um, you have to be quite vulnerable to do these kinds of things. And Kathy, one of the, the soft skills that you mentioned earlier, one of the challenges is trust. And I think it comes back to what you've said now, you know, how do you get an employee who is not productive the entire day to feel comfortable enough to raise their hand and, you know, without there being trust, that person will, will never do that because yeah. of fear of you know, retaliation. But how do you build trust in an organization? I mean, it, it's not something that you can do overnight. And, you know, we are now faced with a challenge that, you know, you almost have to have it in place to get your employees to feel more secure. So is there any in anything that you're doing as an organization or perhaps any advice that you can give you know, our audience with regards to how do you build trust? Well, the, 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 things like trust is there's only one place and that's the top. Uh, it starts with the top. So, so a lot of, I, I think our, our MD, our, our CEO has done a lot through his communications and we're starting to get, get him to live communications where he actually shows his vulnerability, um, um, shows people that he's a person that he's also battling with being locked. He's actually battling and he doesn't like being locked down at all. Um, he wants to be out in the countries, et cetera. And he's starting to share those kinds of things. Um, um, the, the guys that are, are leading businesses, like business units where they are held accountable for top and bottom line delivery, those are the guys that we have to work with to to, to develop, to, because, you know, there's lives around efficiencies and that's, it's, you know, it's, it's what they get tasked with. It's not how they wake up, you know, it's like, have you delivered, is every resource, be it a person, a machine, a financial resource, is it being utilized to the most efficient point of view? Um, so for those guys is, is, is how do we, how do we teach them that trust is an enabler to get all of that and that actually if, if somebody could just admit that they are they've got a free day that they could actually use that free day to deliver something um so in my view um, and this is also why we, we, we when we when we worked on agility etc we started at the top with the XCOM behaviors at that at that um at, at that level so that's actually the level where we, we're starting to talk um and it's going to take coaching um and it's, it's not going to be easy because i mean the, when i when i spoke to them about this opportunity marketplace app immediately people were going like well what if the person not performing in the current role why should they do something else and who's going to give them permission they oh, well, they asked all the usual questions and we have to find the new usual questions um so i mean the, the fact that they actually immediately let people work at home because everybody was so focused on people's safety that they were trusting people working from home without realizing. So they just need to grow mm -hmm. that. They, they actually can do it. So that they, they just need to grow it and, and just realize um, and, and own it. I mean, they, that's where they need to own. It. So another um, question from the audience was, are you envisioning a significant reduction in employee headcount over the next 24 months, 12 to 24? Yeah, well, as everybody knows on the line, I wouldn't be able to tell you if I did. <laughs> But um, let me just just say that, um, you know, our focus is on, we obviously have to watch, you know, the, our customer is going to change, but our focus is on our people and to, I mean, we, we're doing everything that we can not to impact our people. Um, we're doing everything we can to, to support our customers because our customers have been very impacted by, by this COVID. I mean, in South Africa, a large, large base of our customers have not been allowed to operate. Um, 
and our, and our communities because our communities drink our product. It's where our employees come from. So, so we, I mean, we are doing lots and lots of scenario planning. We have access to um, um, how the marketplace has reacted. So China actually, it's turning out, is, has reacted quite differently to Europe. Um, so we're monitoring all of those. I think Africa is, COVID is taking on its own nuances in on the African continent. Um, but we are, a, we were a, a growing organization and we believe that there's still opportunity to grow. Um, and so the, that's why all this thing about reskilling employees, reskilling, upskilling, redeploying becomes the mantra that we have to work to on so that we do not impact our people. And that is, that's where we're working at the moment is, is um, that we, we are hoping that we can come out here with the great future for all our employees. But that said, um, um, I mean, the budget speech a few days ago was, I, I don't know what we're supposed to think. <laughs> uh, we don't know where we're going um, as an economy or as all of our economies through, through, through Africa. Mm -hmm. um, and so, I mean, we just have to keep parting at creating, creating opportunities. Um, but we are, yeah, I, you know, yeah, it's, it's not, I, it's, I mean, I have to actually stop my CEO from actually telling everybody, you know, confirming that there's nothing's going to happen because we don't know if something's going to happen, but it's really our, our intention that, that we will try and avoid. Yeah, sure, definitely. Uh, just some polling feedback. So the question about um, going forward, um, have they compared their current skills and capabilities? So majority who completed it said yes, they have, which is great. Um, and then the other question about, do you believe automation and digitization pre um, presents more opportunities than risks? That was also ma majority said yes, which is also fantastic. Um, so like we said, it, actually each nation will need to consider the de demographics of its citizens, its level of tech maturity and the makeup of its economy to de develop its own upskilling solution. Uh, for instance, a territory with a developed economy and aging population, a strong service sector will have a different priority um, than a region with a developing mostly rural economy and a population which is more people under 30. Um, but yet for all these differences, all the places in the world have one thing in common, a growing number of its working population will need to raise their capabilities and understanding. Um, so just maybe a uh, from your side, if you can give any advice to our delegates today, how can they keep their workforce engaged and focused and feeling valued? So I think that there's, the, 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 I mean, I think you need to talk to our employees. And when I say talk to our employees, it's really about listening, is how they're feeling. Um, and, and, and uh, you know, even if, you, if, you, if you're asking them to reskill, for example, to acquire new skills, is, is to talk them through that, to, to help them change. Um, and I mean, I think the other thing, and, and, and the other thing is, you know, we have to remember to start celebrating things because life is really bad at the moment that nobody, I mean, it's, 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 I mean, the sales guys are devastated at the, at the current talk, even the new targets for them is not as challenging because they, you know, they've beaten those targets in the past. So, so everything mm -hmm. that everybody has to look forward to has been taken away. I mean, right now, none of us know if we can actually spend Christmas with our families, for example. So as an organization, we need to find opportunities to celebrate and and I'm going to have a hand at this in about two weeks time where we're actually going to hold our company awards um, virtually um, and because actually we just let it slide we we're supposed to have done it at that conference in in Addis and um, so so how do we have more fun and 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 you know uh, how do we do you meet with your team for drinks on on you know one of these video conferences at five in the evening? We need to find ways of connecting like that because this is um we need to tell people that 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 we appreciate what they're doing or that they we know they're working extra hours it's lots and lots of face time from from leadership lots of face time from leadership you can't rely on the walking past them in the passage it's got to be very bespoke uh, deliberate um uh, times that you have to create with employees um and that is taking its toll i think all of us are um, um, you know, what's uh, uh, meeting for uh, fatigued <laughs> from, yeah. from these, but, it, but you've got to find ways to make it exciting. I mean, I, I actually had a half an, I have a half an hour weekly meeting with my direct team. And once I, it was at five and I said, 
let's have a glass of wine together. And at six o'clock, I had to say, hey, time out, guys, we need to go to our families now, because actually they enjoyed it so much. So to, and do, do things differently, I think. Mix it all up uh, and, and, and find the fun, because the fun has really gone out of it, things at the moment. <laughs> No, you said the one you had to uh, wear pajamas to the meeting or <laughs> that's it yes yeah 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 and on the whatsapp group we often somebody will send out a challenge and then we have to show what footwear we're wearing and we've already teased the um the person that looks after the group office um uh etiquette uh we've put in proposals around the new corporate wear and that we please don't not allowed to wear shoes anymore because some of us don't even know where to find our shoes in <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, can we bring our cat to work, especially in winter, because they sleep on our laps? You know, all of those <laughs> kinds of things, I think. And it's true, I think corporate clothing is probably gone. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, final question. Just, um, which long-lasting effects do you think COVID will have on, on your business? Oh, your, on, on your people? What do you think? Um... I hope there are no negative long lasting effects. I mean, I think this is, I mean, um, I mean, it's going to be a time in everybody's life, obviously. And, and initially I started comparing it to, to the Y2K debacle, <laughs> but it's not. <laughs> um, um, I, I think that um, appreciation, I, you know, I think that people, particularly our sort of introverts at work, the, the, the appreciation for each other as physical beings. So everything that we've actually belittled the younger generations around, you know, they do everything on their phone and they're not they're not interpersonal in any way, actually has proved to be incorrect. Um, I think people will appreciate um, contact time um, with people more, and and I'm hoping then that that would actually improve engagement and 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 the need to go to work. Because I think I said it earlier, it's, it's actually caught me by surprise about how much work is a social place, more almost a social place than a workplace. And that is, I think, is what people will appreciate when we when we can get back there. Mm. And what I've also heard, like um, a lot of my colleagues, they said they will never sit in traffic again. They don't understand why they did it. <laughs> <laughs> well, coming from PE. We don't worry about things like that. I always say to my job because I don't know why you want to sit in the traffic. So we and and that's actually for why for some time we've actually encouraged you know remote working because I mean that is such a, a lot of waste of time. Um and, and so yeah, I think people have appreciated people have appreciated things at home as well and family and all and all of that. So but I would agree. It's it you can actually get this done in a lot more ways than just sitting at the desk. Yeah, no, definitely. Well, um, that's the end of our session. So thank you very much for, for sharing all your perspectives and um, shedding some light on things we need to, to focus on, like leadership and um, the softer skills and building trust and um, really caring about our, our employees. Um, it's been very valuable. And we've also, I see a, some other comments from, from the audience also saying very exciting and discussion and they really enjoyed it. So thank you so much and um yeah until next time thank you very much that's been uh, i've enjoyed it <laughs> uh, kathy thank you very much and i think yeah we can probably continue talking for for the whole afternoon yeah. so thank you <laughs> thank you very much for your time and your insights and you know for me some of the key takeaways i think you said right at the beginning we are now the authors with a pen in our hand for the new way of work and i i, I think that's certainly certainly the case um and certainly the challenge, and I'm sure our audience, you know, can can resonate with this. You know, mental health is becoming, you know, top of the the agenda in terms of the challenges that we face with our with our employees. And certainly, this pandemic has exacerbated some of those issues that may previously have been been hidden. But um, I'm glad to see that you are finding reasons to uh, to celebrate. I will certainly send an email to our head of HR to ask if I can come to work without shoes from now on. I think that's a good, <laughs> great idea. But um, thank you. Thank you very much um, once again. And um, for our audience, our next event is on the 9th of July, where we will be discussing agility and resilience. And um, you know, those two points were mentioned a lot throughout our conversation today. So please make sure you register for that event. And thank you very much for your attendance um, today and um, we're looking forward to hosting you again 
in two weeks time. So with that, thank you everyone. Thank you again, Kathy. Enjoy the rest thank of your you. afternoon. Thanks, Andrea. Bye. And goodbye. Bye-bye. <laughs>